we'll be starting shortly. Um, so I just want to introduce uh, our speaker. And firstly, I want to thank all of you for uh, taking time out and joining us in the session. Uh, hope all of you are doing safe and well in this uh, critical situation of ours. So moving into our webinar topic today, uh, we have our Chennai City head coach, Mr. Akbar Nawaz. He'll be talking about his coaching philosophy, uh, which he had successfully imparted in uh, Chennai City FC in making them the champions uh, of last season. So a little small interaction about Akbar himself. Uh, Akbar Nawaz, a former Singaporean international, signed as a head coach of Chennai City FC in 2018 and went on to win the league in his first year with the club. He was very instrumental, not only bringing the trophy to Tamil Nadu for the first time ever, but also playing a brand of football that was not quite common in the league. So, with no, with no further ado, I uh, ask uh, the head coach Akbar Nawaz to take on uh, the sessions, which will be followed by a and a once the session is over. Thank you. Hi everyone, uh, welcome to this uh, session. Uh, it's an interactive session with a uh, question and answer after the end. I would like first of all to welcome uh, the coaches of all levels, youth coaches, senior coaches, uh, stakeholders, owners, fans, whoever is out there catching this session. I welcome them, much appreciation and thanks. And uh, hopefully we can have an interactive uh, live question and answer after this short presentation. Okay, uh, I thank Ashwin, Ashwin also for the kind introduction that he gave me. And of course, obviously for the club to, to have us uh, presenting this session on my coaching philosophy, or rather the coaching philosophy. It is actually one of the club's philosophies to give our young Tamil Nadu talents a chance to shine. And uh, we are very pleased to have been able to do this in the very first season uh, that we started from the start to the beginning, which we garnered the championship at the end, as what F. Shrin has uh, rightly so mentioned. Now, without any delay, I shall uh, move on and um, talk about exactly what this entails, what the philosophy entails, and how, how do we go about actually putting this in place. If we, um, we talk about developing thinking footballers, I mean, part of the philosophy is to develop thinking footballers. Obviously, everyone knows um, developing thinking footballers is also about game intelligence. Well, game intelligence is, is something not easy to coach and something not, not easy definitely to see your players doing it during the game. And during, during trainings, uh, if they were to do it, you'll be thinking to yourself, can they replicate it in the game? So developing thinking footballers was part of the process, was part of the, the philosophy that uh, me and my team of coaches was greatly fixated upon, on how to make sure these footballers become thinking ones. What do we mean by that? The main part of this philosophy is actually to build players to react to the dynamic situation that the game presents. Okay, so the dynamic situation that the game presents. Now, what do we mean by this? Dynamic situation in football, it happens almost every single second of the time. How the players react to that situation is crucial. I mean, during transition, when he wins the ball, if he has an opportunity to play forward, which could result into a chance at goal, and if he delays that microsecond or that second itself, it goes into another situation. What does he do then? Does he attack the space then? Or does he play a square pass? What does he do? So these are the situations where we want to expose our players to so that they become good enough to make better decisions. 
Why? We want them to make better decisions under pressure. Because um, when we first when we first came, me and my team of coaches, uh, when we first came to Chennai City, we saw that there were good players. There are players that are they are good enough to play in this kind of system. There are players that we can teach. There are players that we can coach. But they are not expressing themselves enough. They are not uh, being brave enough. They are not making decisions better under pressure. So these are one of the things where developing thinking footballers are key to so that they can make better decisions under pressure. That's what we want from our players. Obviously, from then, then we progress towards opponent goal because making good decisions is to progress towards opponent goal. If not, we'll be keep, keep on in at least playing the side passes or, or we are keep, keep on in playing in our own half. And obviously, to create a chance at goal. This is key. Uh, for us, our team of coaches, being uh, players who are relatively uh, new, to, to the league. We wouldn't want to impose so much of pressure that, look, every game you have to score this amount of goal, or every game you, you, you must score goal, every game you must do this, every game you must do that. We try to provide an incentive and environment for them to make those mistakes and learn from it. So chances at goal, instead of telling them you must score a goal, is another way of putting it. Oh, Jordi Gris Villa, why is this uh, photo here? Uh, first and foremost, he influenced uh, my philosophy. Uh, Jordi Gris was very key in influencing my philosophy. He was a great influence in actually shaping me as a coach. His unselfish, unwavering attitude in sharing his knowledge during his time with Pep Guardiola, during his time at Barcelona as a scout, during his, his time uh, growing up as a coach, he really not only mentored me, he, he guided me, he in fact shared with me all the nuances, all, all the trainings on what this philosophy entails. I was with him uh, in Philippines for, for almost a season, or rather towards the, the end of the season. He shared with me so many things that has shaped my influence in this philosophy. Generally, without him sharing with me all this that he knows, I don't think so I would have carried on with such belief with such conviction, with uh, such commitment towards this course. Because um, having this philosophy, having this style of play, you really need to be brave. And I was blessed, um, God's will. And I was lucky enough to have met such a person in Jordi Gris, who have gone uh, immense knowledge in uh, coach education and to be mentored by him. To be, to be guided by him. And obviously, sometimes I do get criticized by him or he, he does lash out at me respectfully when uh, I do uh, uh, many things wrongly or I do not follow according to the philosophy that I preach. He's, uh, he's uh, very, um, uh, he criticizes me a lot if, what, if I don't do what I preach. So I thank him for that. And I thank him for being very direct and true, not as a friend, but also towards my coaching development and towards my learning curve as a coach. For that, Joe Degrees has to take a lot of credit in shaping my belief in this philosophy. Now, what are the challenges I faced? Um, I was worried about the repercussions. Repercussions meaning, um, yes, during my prior stints, uh, I, I won a, a reserve league title. But during my senior team stints, um, I was runners up. In, in, in the cup final, in the league. Yes, I did well in the Philippines, but I was still runners up. And I came to Chennai City, uh, a team where we are going to build players. And if I'm going to play this way, if I'm going to play this style, I was generally, in fact, uh, I was afraid. What would be the repercussions? What would people think of me uh, if I lose? What would be my reputation like if I play this way and we keep losing 5-0, 6-0? What, what would the fans think? What would everyone think? I had this fear initially when I first came, when I, uh, when I walked to the field like Coimbatore Stadium, I was thinking to myself, what do I do? Do I carry on and uh, did what I did from the Philippines and here and do more? Or do I just give it up and then, well, go and try to win each and every game, depend on what's the situation and play according to what the game presents? I had uh, my friend again, Jody, to, to help me instill in that belief. 
and uh, we started out in actually playing this way, playing this style, and trying to make sure we went ahead with it. One of the most important thing was to convince the team behind the team, means the coaches, my assistant coaches, my officials, all these people who are behind us, because we need to go as one. Having this philosophy, um, we cannot have our own team behind the team doubting each and every time if let's say we lose a game or if let's say we draw a game of things don't go well the team behind the team is very crucial in this aspect of this philosophy as much as teaching this philosophy on the field it's not a one-time thing it's not uh, i just go and talk to my uh, team of officials and my coaches and tell them look we have to believe in it no it's a repetitive thing it is something that we have to we have to keep on talking is something that i have to i had to make sure that if there's any doubt in that particular day or in that particular philosophy not going right i had to address it i had to educate not only themselves myself on how to address it and lucky enough and good enough obviously with with jody it was easy because he believed in the philosophy but uh, when he went to greener pastures to new york city i took another assistant coach uh, coach bala he was actually uh, someone that i knew back in singapore and he believed in this style so it was easy for him to seem through this style and we keep kept on communicating with the coaches and actually uh, i dare to say today they are very much in line with this philosophy and they can even without me getting involved be able to explain to any player what this philosophy is all about and what what can we do to improve ourselves the management well um i had i had an uh, an owner uh, definitely everyone knows it's uh, rohit ramesh first when i met him uh, he 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 told me he was an arsenal fan uh, it's good because uh, arsenal also would like to play a style similar to this it was not about convincing my management of the philosophy it was the other way around um the challenges i had with the management was i was worried if results did not come in um, i'm sure stakeholders will talk to my owners will, will talk to rohit and say hey look uh, you're playing this way but results still not coming this is not happening i was more worried of those challenges as opposed to how I, i'm able to convince my owner on how we wanted to play because he was very um, uh, truthful he was very honest in having me letting me allowing me the freedom to actually run the team without any interference without any uh, any repercussions we giving me full of confidence in in terms of if we lose a game or if we draw a game for that we have to credit the management and of course to the owner rohit in part to play for this philosophy and for the success now one of the most uh, difficult challenge was the scouting the scouting was was wasn't an easy thing for us to start off with um everyone knows that uh, jody was with me in the initial stages we went to spain credit to jody for getting the players shortlisted uh, i think he shortlisted maybe 10 or 15 players uh, we went to watch maybe seven eight games or nine games uh, i can't remember and during those games we wanted to select players based on the positions that could fit into this style this philosophy which jody has much knowledge of and uh, which she has shortlisted so credit for selecting the players and we got a forward who wanted to play inside the box as opposed to outside the box we wanted to have a false winger which we got we wanted to have a number 8 or a number 10 that is not only aggressive but forward thinking we wanted to have a ball playing center back and a ball playing goalkeeper and uh, everyone knows the players that we got they also played an important part into our season and into shaping the philosophy now scouting of the local lads that's a little bit different um yes we had the opportunity to scout in the chennai league then to see what the players are how the players are um we watched the games me and jody and then um, after that we conducted trials and during the trials we picked the players there were uh, many 
instances where obviously coaches, officials uh, will give me pointers. Okay, this player can do this, this player can do this, this player can do this. But the one thing I was fixated upon, and I can share with uh, you guys this, I was really fixated not about the technical ability, not about the physical ability. Um, I was really fixated on how the players process information before they receive a ball. How much information can they process? I was looking at their eyes. I was looking at their facial expression. I was looking at their behavior. I was looking at how much information they process before they receive the ball and what was their plan. How many steps ahead did they plan? What was their, their moves ahead? I was so fixated in this when I was watching them for in terms of the scouting. Obviously, we all know there are many aspects to the scouting as coaches. You have you can tick the box and, and say, this is the way to do it, this is the way to do it, this is the way to do it. But for me, that what I've gone through, I was fix, fixated on this to see how intelligent was that player. And then we scouted them, we took them, and we proceed on to train. Now, I have to give importance to, to psychologist Bruce Tuckman for, for this stage of uh, the preparation. Uh, I'm sure many of you know that in team building, there's forming, norming, storming, and uh, at the end of the day, performing. So let me go through how, how we did it. Okay, forming. Training the trialists. Um, after selecting the players, we train them. And it was during this training, then we assess the attitude, the behavior on and off the pitch and to see how and where can the players fit into the position according to the system of play, according to the philosophy. An example, if we, want, if we wanted our fullbacks to come in and play in, in the middle of the park, so we decided to convert our central midfielder into fullbacks. These are some of the examples we did when we trained the travelers. Next, storming. Uh, we had a lot of sessions on how to integrate. What do I mean by how to integrate these players? We had the foreigners. We had the, the, the local lads. There will be times where obviously the foreigners had a, had a good base in terms of footballing school uh, from where they come from. Now, the thing is, would they be confident enough with the local lads? Would, would, would they be thinking, can they actually mix with the local lads and play this kind of football? There was strong opinions from them with my one-on-one -on -one sessions. There was strong uh, lack of belief with my one-on-one -on -one sessions uh, with the foreigners. But with time, with talking to them, with having individual meeting sessions almost on a weekly basis, twice, three times, to actually convince, to actually relay that in training and to, to have arguments, to have disagreements, and to integrate them together was key on and off the pitch. What I mean by on and off the pitch? Off the pitch, yes, we all know it's about team building, it's about talking, it's about, it's about storming. But on the pitch, how do we do it? It's about giving conditions, it's about managing, it's about treating them fairly, but can a coach actually treat them equally, which is not easy to do. So during the storming sessions, we went through all these, all these phases, we developed, we developed the team, we developed, de developed a common language where the players could learn. Now, the training aspects of it. Now, in this norming session, this is where I started to, uh, or rather we started to challenge the players. Me and my team of officials played a great role in this. Uh, my assistant coach, my goalkeeper coach, uh, even my, my uh, uh, logistics manager, uh, even my general manager were all involved in actually how to shape the player on and off the pitch. Now, on the pitch, whenever I stop, stop a session, I wouldn't be the only one doing the coaching. My assistant coach would actually also go into the pitch and coach with the same topic, but coach the other players. So the players actually get to learn more. The players actually get to do more. My goalkeeper coach would be busy actually telling him or re reiterating to him about the philosophy, about the topic of the day, about, about the training session. This, this form of training was very crucial with my team of coaches. I couldn't do it alone because when watching them alone, observing them alone is not enough. My team, of, my team of coaches helped a lot in terms of forming this philosophy. 
in the daily sessions that we had, another key of, of this was the video sessions. With the daily, we, we did not fail. If I'm not wrong, we only failed once. In one day for the whole season, we did not take a video. The video sessions of the daily trainings was crucial because only then we could have a working training daily session plan. Yes, we have our plan. We have our macro plan, we have a colo, we have a daily plan. But the daily plan has to change based on what we saw on the video of the training. And eyes can lie, but videos don't lie. So it's easier to communicate with the players. It's easier to tell the players. It's easier to, to empower the players to actually analyze the game. And we did empower the players to analyze the game. We did empower the players to think like coaches so that they can have better performance and understand the system and style of play better. Now, this is what I mean when they start to perform, which is believing in the philosophy. Let me play you this short video. This is against the Middle Eastern team. Huh? Now, against Al Rifa, against a uh, top Kuwaiti uh, team who were champions of that season when we played them in the Champions League. And this game, we had uh, young Suhil, we have uh, younger players playing. We, we had our three foreigners plus, plus one Asian. We started this game by building up. Now, before this game, everybody was saying, uh, if we are going to play this way, we are going to get sucked into a 4 nil, 5 nil, or 6 nil score line. But the question is, we have been believing in this philosophy. We have been doing it. Now the challenge is, can we do this against a better team? Can we do this on the international stage? Can we do this on a Champions League stage? Yes. If we lose 7-0 or lose 8-0, my neck will be on the chalking block. That I know. But it would be actually a failure to my players, it will be actually a disappointment to my players if I stop them from playing this philosophy against a top team. Because we never know, can we do it or not? We lost 1-0 in this game, but guess what? We built up 26 times from their pressing. We invited them to press. And after 15 minutes, Al Rifa decided to sit back. That was the respect we got. We played 600 world passes, yes, the, the, the stats was good. In the end, yes, we lost the game. But to have this kind of performance, I believe in my coaching career, money or experience can't buy. Because it was a great pleasure to actually watch this performance. And, and I can share with uh, everyone out there, after this game, everyone was walking uh, back to the dressing room. I was alone by my side and tears started to flow down from my eyes. Not because we lost, not because uh, uh, we couldn't progress, was the joy that I had that the player could play like this, especially the local lads, in this structure, in this magnitude, in this Champions League game. Watch the game and you know what I mean. And obviously, I have to give uh, credence to, to the appreciation legends such as Sunil Chetri giving us uh, credit like this. This only goes to show all the hard work that the officials did, the, the club did, uh, the team behind the team. This is all their hard work. For me as a coach, with this, with this philosophy, yes, uh, I try to embark on it. I try to impart on it. But at the end of the day, the success behind my coaching philosophy, the success behind what we did, the success behind the title was many factors. And definitely credit to my friend Jordi, credit to the owner Ra Rohit Ramesh, because without these two influences, it is very difficult for a coach to be brave enough to actually go this way, to go to a, 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 a league in another country where I, I didn't even win a league in my own country. Maximum I got was runners up. But with this support, it is very important. And the constant communication that I had with my owner was immense. Without the constant communication I had with him on a daily basis, maybe I would have given up at certain times when the chips are down. But he keep telling me, he, he keep, he keep uh, saying, look, 
give the Tamil Nadu talents a chance, give the young players a chance, give the players a chance, give them time, give them time. Sometimes I was renting and raving. Uh, I have a very open relationship with my owner. And he would tell me, give them time. Give them, yes, you're doing well, but give them time. So to have this kind of owner, I've not experienced. It was very crucial for me. And to have a friend like Jody, I've not experienced. To have an assistant coach like Bala, I've not experienced because he's very loyal. Whoever comes to him, uh, he will say, he, he, he won't say I'm wrong. He'll say, let's go and talk to the coach. Neither he will give a difference of opinion. Whoever came to my goalkeeper coach, Satish, he would say the same thing. Whoever go to my team officials, they will say the same thing. Like I said in my earlier slides, once you get everyone on the same page, from the owner, from uh, your immediate friends, from your mentor, from everyone, and things will fall into place, and you get appreciation like this, which we thank uh, Sunil for it. Okay, with that, I end, and I would like to thank everyone out there who has watched this short presentation. Now I leave it for the question and answers. Please, please feel free to ask, and I'll try to explain myself as much as I can. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Coach. We already have some questions coming in, uh, so I'll just uh, get right to it. So the first question, what, in your opinion, are the attributes that the local players need to develop to step up and play at the national stage? Sorry, again? So what, in your opinion, are the attributes that the local mm. players need to develop to step up and play at the national stage? Oh, I mean, here I talk about uh, developing thinking footballers. You see, at the national, at the national stage, um, the physicality part of it is also important. The intensity is also important. For me, the advice I can, I can give to the players who are actually uh, watching, watching this session is to train with intensity whenever they train and to play with intensity whenever they play. Because with that, when they get called up to the national team level, it'll be easier for them physically because, you know, at international football, the pace is different. Uh, the level is different. The game intelligence is different. Attributes that these players must have. They must be willing to learn. They must have an open mind. And to come and for coaches to actually build these attributes in them must create the environment to make mistakes. That is key not only in training, but in the game. We must be patient enough. It's not easy because I have been frustrated also as a coach, but I have to knock myself and keep telling that, look, they make mistakes. We have to teach, we have to teach, we have to teach. No matter how much the pressure that we get as a coach, our job is to teach and teach and teach and not stop teaching. Now, next. Yeah, so... There's another question. How did your pre-season preparation this year in Thailand went on and off the field? Uh, Thailand was good because um, we brought only uh, the local lads uh, to Thailand. That a good, uh, if I'm not wrong, maybe 12 to 13 days or almost two weeks of pre-season. Um, what I can say we brought back from there was in Thailand, it was so conducive. The training environment, we had two pitches. Uh, where we stayed was so close to the to the field, the opponents that we played was uh, of a very, very good level. The intensity of, intensity of the games, it was a good selection phase for actually for the local players to enter into the preseason at Thailand. And we had a lot of good uh, interactive sessions and good learning curve for the players who were on selection phase. And after that phase, we had to drop players who uh, we didn't want and who we wanted to bring on to the I-League. Yeah. So the next question, uh, do you fit the players into your formation or philosophy or do you change your formation or philosophy on the availability of the players? In this case at Chennai City, on the availability of the players. Uh, like I mentioned in my, I think, third or fourth slide, yes, the foreigners, uh, we actually went to pick the players that we wanted in certain positions the, to fit into our style, into our system, yes. That is a must because we had that luxury. But uh, for the local lads, if I were to pick the players, this is just my own opinion. Uh, I mean, different coaches can have different opinion. If I were to pick the players as I did before with other teams that I want a right back, I want a centre back on this, I think it would be very difficult. I had to pick. I had to pick a player to actually 
come into the system and teach them the system and teach them the formation and educate them and see what happens. Um, I prefer this way. Obviously, it's not, it's not the ideal way, but I prefer this way and uh, to any team that I go to, whether I had internationals like I had in my previous two or three other clubs, I will still do the same way. All right, uh, so there's another question. Could you discuss the settling in period of uh, finalizing your philosophy? How did it differ from season one to season two at Chennai City? I think uh, we have not settled. This philosophy takes a long time. It can take three to four years. It can even take five years. The whole season can be, can be, can be spent on developing possession. Well, when we first came to Chennai, uh, even after my friend Jody left uh, and coach so Bala came, I, I remember during the first session, uh, we were we were bemused at the very first session that we played eight against eight or nine against my small-sided game, and the place was running all over. And that is where doubts came in whether we could play we could play this philosophy. But then we decided to go through, and it is a learning curve. We can't say the fact that last season we won the championship, we are perfect. No, we got away with many things. We got away to become champions. We can't say that this season we did not win the championship, that we were imperfect also. No, what, whatever wrongs we learned this season made us better. In fact, this season I learned more as a coach as opposed to the, to the last season. And if you combine both the good and the bad, what can you do in the third season? It's a never-ending philosophy for this. I don't have a specific time frame, but for me, it's still, it's still a work in progress. It's still a learning curve. And to see the process, whether the players can do it or not, it will still be very uh, inconsistent because this philosophy is not, it, it, you don't build it in one or two seasons. All right, so... Uh... Another question here. How important is it for you to play play out from the back? And uh, what are the advantages to it? Playing out from the back wasn't actually uh, uh, like, uh, like it's a must. Like uh, you must do it just because we want people to, to see beautiful football. Just because we want people to credit us for playing out from the back. No, there is a reason to it. The reason we play out from the back is to control the game. Because if from goalkeeper, you belt the ball up and stats have shown, and we have shown to the players many times, whenever you do that, at least out of 10 times, maybe seven times, you won't get the ball. You won't get control of the game. Opponent will get the ball most of the time. But by building up, you control the game. Yes, there are risks. Yes, we have lost games, uh, especially last year, if you can remember, against Churchill. Had been lost uh, the ball in the middle of the park. And we lost that game 3-2. It was a title deciding game. But what happened to Edwin after that? In the Super Cup, how he did against Bengaluru, with the unpredictability he showed with the back heel, the, with the bravery he showed uh, in the box to back heel, and from then on for, for us to score that goal. That's what I meant from, from the start of this presentation to the end, how we develop thinking footballers. That's how they go step by step, step by step. And I think this this... This was crucial in terms of uh, the build-up. Advantage of the build-up is we control the game. And the biggest advantage is to invite pressure and to beat the first line. Because after you beat the first line, to beat the second line is much easier. To get into the attacking third and to have a chance at goal, you have better success rate. Yeah. So, yeah. We have the next question. How do you see the challenge of uh, developing winners and then seeing them picked by bigger or ISL teams? Um, actually, it, it's, it's, a, it's a joy and sometimes sadness because if you lose too many players, you, you don't have continuity in the squad. But uh, if you look at it positively, um, it's a joy for the players. I mean, how often can actually the player... Uh, player don't move on. They're going to move on to bigger things, to bigger clubs, to, to better pay packages, better salaries, better, uh, uh, probably better, better place where they can actually excel. So I think I have to give uh, 
credit for the players who went up there. And actually, it's a joy for me to see them moving up. Although, part of me, for selfish reasons, there will be some sadness because there's no continuity. But we have to strategize now. In the future, how can we learn from this? Season one, season two, how can we learn? Now, how do we have a strategy in place where, yes, we can allow players to move on and still try to keep a continuity? It's still a learning process. How can we fix it? All right, our next question. Uh, how are the CCFC fans understanding your philosophy and the style of play? Uh, you, I mean, fans want to see uh, goals and results. And, uh, uh, yeah. it, interestingly, uh, yeah, interestingly, there was a fan uh, in my very third session I had at Coimbatore. Uh, I can't remember who he was. He came up to me. Uh, he said he read about he read a bit about how we wanted to play. He said he's was playing the Chennai League and all that. Because uh, in the Chennai League and uh, in pre previous season we lost seven one to East Bengal, and I was there. We we Chennai League we didn't we didn't end up the top. So he was saying, "Are you sure Indian footballers can play this way?" He gave me a very sarcastic laugh, and then he he went away when I told him, "Yes, this is the way we want to play." He, he laughed sarcastically and went off. But then. Uh, uh, the only way to convince a fan is to show on the field. And the only way to, to, to garner this, we were blessed that the results came out of it. The process was there. We were much more focused on the process. And we, we, were, we were lucky enough to get the outcome as well. But for me, I believe personally, you need to have this process to influence the outcome. Because we did, without this process, you can have the outcome, but probably the outcome could be short term. And now the fans are one of our biggest supporters, are one of our uh, major, major influence in, in uh, seeing this philosophy. They're beginning to understand. And actually one or two of the fans have gone for, for coaching licenses now. They have spoke to my assistant coach. They have spoken to me about, about they're going for this coaching license. They're understanding the game. And when we talk to the fans, especially this Lion Floor fans, I remember, they, they talk about football and we took the time to educate them, we took the time to actually tell them what is this about. Because this philosophy, you need to take some time to tell people what is it about instead of just uh, not educating them because they, they might not see it that way. And like I said in my live interview uh, previous against Carlos, uh, the fans were so appreciative when I told them this season, I'm sorry for losing the game. They told me, no coach, what you have given us or what your team has given us we have already appreciated. We could not have asked for more what you did last season or what you guys did last season. For that, I have to congratulate the fans. Yeah. Uh, we've got uh, a couple of hypothetical questions here. <laughs> so, uh, okay, I answer hypothetically. <laughs> yeah. So do you think Chennai will be able to field a team entirely of uh, local players and still be able to compete for the AFC spots? Uh, it will be tough, but I wouldn't say it's impossible. Uh, I'm a bit stubborn in that uh, in that area uh, as a coach. Um, yes, I know uh, some senior coaches or some coaches looking at probably my session now will be laughing and said, well, he doesn't know what he's talking about. And some might say it's unrealistic not to play with the foreigners and go on to, to play the AFC Cup. But... Ideally, it would be difficult to play without the foreigners, especially in the international stage. But if it comes to that, we still have to give it a try. We still have to go out there and see what can be done. But it's not impossible. It's not impossible. I'm sure everyone has seen how we played against uh, Al Rifa. Before the game, everyone thought we would lose 5-6-0. Or let's not talk about Scotland. Before the game, they, they didn't even fancy us dominating the game or taking the game to them. But what happened after that? That Al Rifa game actually answers this question whether a team of local lads can play the AFC Cup or not. And I wouldn't want to get into a debate between foreigners and locals because I believe you need to have both to integrate and lift the level of everyone. All right. Uh, the second the hypothetical question. So, if we had the rule, uh, the 3 plus 1 foreign, foreigners rule uh, this season, 2019-20, what do you think would have been the outcome of uh, CCFC in the table? 
I think we still be uh, be having a chance to, apart from Mohan Bagan winning the title, we still have a chance to be runners up this season, even with three plus one. If anyone who had watched us this season, we played most of the game with only two plus one or sometimes three plus one. We rarely had uh, five foreigners on the pitch. That was actually a blessing, these guys, when we went for the AFC because we did not disrupt any momentum due to the injuries of our players and the loss of some of our foreigners. It was inadvertently we played with three plus one and sometimes two plus one only. And if you know, and um, uh, I think if I'm not wrong, based on uh, the whole league, ISL, I league combined together, uh, we probably could be the only Indian team with the spine of the team, all the local players. We had VJ as number nine. We had uh, Mashur at uh, centre back. We had the three central midfielders, Charles, Jackson, Sriram, as the spine of the team. Our another centre back, Slava, was was uh, with Mashur. Our wingers was the two foreigners, and our goalkeeper was Nozet. We practically played like this, three plus one, almost the whole season. And I don't know how many Indian teams have this kind of spine. I'm not, I'm not going to brag about it, but uh, it's for everyone to see how they did. And as I said, sometimes when we give these players a chance, sometimes when we give these players time, even sometimes I don't give them time, they can develop. Even sometimes if I feel that the, the belief is not there, my own, uh, my assistant coach will start coming. This is a process again. We need to give them time and patience. Yeah, so the next question, uh, what specific traits did the local players lack uh, in comparison to the foreigners? And what was the process they had to go through to uh, make it up? Technically, I mean, uh, technically, they're okay because uh, the Tamil Nadu players, they're quite silky with their, with their feet. Um, tactically, I would say, what we needed to do. Like I said, during the first training sessions, the foreigners was there. Our local lads was just running, running everywhere in the small side of the game, running everywhere. And the foreigners, uh, I remember Nesto and uh, Sandro couldn't get the ball. They were just looking left, looking right, looking left, looking right. They didn't know what to do. So tactically, there was an immense uh, uh, knowledge we had to impart to the local lads in terms of trying to bring up their level. Tactically, is, is, is the main thing that we had to improve. All right, the next question. Uh, can you answer the question, what is your philosophy in one line? What is my... Ah, building intelligent players to react to the dynamic situations that a game presents. That's the philosophy. So how important is it for your staff and players to buy into the philosophy and how would you manage differences in ideas or opinions? Well, um, like I mentioned earlier, the team behind the team is important. Uh, we have agreements, we have disagreements, we have opinions, we have fights, we have we, we quarrel all the time, we have, we, have, we have debates, we have lots of meeting sessions. It was important to influence them to this philosophy because if we don't, cracks will open, things will happen, and then sometimes when you lose or when you draw, things will go all, all over the place and it affects the team, it affects the philosophy. For me to influence the team behind the team, the coaches, the officials, was a key factor. It's about constant communication, constant uh, education, constant way of to and fro, two-way communication with the team of officials for this philosophy to, to go through. Uh, so, did you have to adapt your philosophy to Indian football when you came in? Uh, very good question because um, uh, when I started, it was very much in my mind, should I adapt to it, should I uh, have my own way or should I, should I uh, see what uh, the top level coaches are doing? The answer is I had to adapt to it, to Indian football because being, um, I was in Singapore serving in the Federation for almost six, seven years. We had many, many, many European coaches come to us as technical directors. Many of them, I won't name names or anything, but the problem is sometimes uh, it's good 
I myself have gone to to IAC for attachment, to 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 Madrid for attachment. Whatever, whatever I bring there, back to India or to any other country, if you're going to take the same philosophy, the same thing, and not adapt to Indian football, I think would be a recipe for disaster. It's just my own personal opinion, because if you don't adapt, it's very difficult to build your team. Then you will have a lot of frustrations with the players, with the results, with everything, with the whole environment as a whole. Uh, what are the challenges you faced while implementing your philosophy in India? Um, the repercussions was there. Uh, challenges I faced was when I lose or when I draw. I mean, uh, I have to answer for it. I have to, I have to convince the players. The belief in the philosophy is very important. Convincing, apart from your team behind the team, convincing the players is a daily process because uh, it's not easy. Humans are, are not robots. They have emotions. They have, they have their own minds. Every player has a different character. Every player adapts to pressure differently. So influencing them, making them believe in this philosophy was key. Making them believe that playing this way you can influence the outcome, you can influence the result was key. Making them believe that they can be good players, they can be thinking footballers, they can be players who can go a certain level was key. And I'm so happy that uh, our previous players like Edwin Suse and all that got, got a call up to for the national training camp. So they need to believe there is light at the end of the tunnel uh, in developing yourself as a thinking footballer. And now I'm very proud of uh, most of the players because they are when we have our video sessions, they are talking football language to me. They, they, are, they are becoming coaches, in fact. And when they do that, they will, they will train better, they will perform better. All right. So how would you compare Tamil Nadu players to the players of uh, other states in India? Well, uh, other states of India, you know, from the Northeast, of course, you have uh, the aggression, the intensity. Uh, we all know what uh, the Northeast footballers can do. But uh, Tamil Nadu footballers, um, with no disrespect to anyone, has uh, some silkiness to it. I see a lot of technical skills. I see a lot of flair. Actually, we have a lot of Tamil Nadu footballers with a lot of flair. We can find them. We can nurture them. We can grow them. Then, and together with the Northeast players, together as a country, uh, I think Indian football will, will progress to a very much a top footballing nation in time to come. Right. So what advices would you give to the youth coaches in India? Well, um, I think it's key, right? The youth coaches is, uh, is the future of, of the football, is the future of uh, how actually the clubs can progress, how actually the national teams can progress, how actually uh, Indian football can progress. One of the most, one of the key factors, uh, we all know what Germany did after they lost to England. We all know in 2000 how they shaped, how they changed their, their football system. What did they do? They got, they got the coaches educated. They right from the bottom, right from the academy level. They work with the schools. They work with the coaches. They work with the youth coaches. They got every everything in place, and then they did very well in the international scenes ten years later. So I think for the youth coaches must start um, letting players express themselves, must start developing their mind, must start uh, tinkering with their tactical intelligence, must start having a two-way communication, must start having uh, a platform where they are able to make mistakes after mistakes after mistakes and still able to teach, although it's frustrating. And of course, uh, for, for youth coaches, the result don't really matter and you can actually try to be more brave then as opposed to a, a senior team coach. And I've seen some of the youth coaches in, in our club and uh, I think they are much more savvy, much more technically inclined, much more, uh, I mean, you Google anything, probably you know more than me. So I think uh, the young coaches now are technically good with their gadgets and they can learn, they can, they can become very good coaches if they keep believing and they keep improving the players. All right. Uh, so, any three advices for a layman or a fan wanting to become a football coach? 
any three advisors, oh, must go for the coaching license. <laughs> I think it's good that uh, you start going for the licenses first because um, no matter how much we can learn from YouTube, Google, or, or what have you, the coach educators are actually uh, play an important role when they educate you during the license. If you go for your D, your C, your B, your A, or whatever the license entails, that is a start. Because if, if you don't go for your license, it's like if you don't get your driving license, I mean, how do you go on to get the, the, the experience? So you need to go for your licenses, get the base from the coach educators, and you never know, these coach educators can be your mentor where you interact almost uh, every now and then to progress in your coaching career. All right, we've got a very technical question. Uh, if thinking players need to have a good spatial awareness, uh, how would you coach spatial awareness? Spatial awareness is not easy to coach. Why? Because if during their golden age, when they are growing up, if they are not, if they are told to restrict their movement, restrict their expression of uh, freedom when they play, to teach spatial awareness when they are senior level football, it's not easy because they will develop a different kind of habits, but it's not impossible. So how do we do it? Repetition. Like in Chennai City, if we know they don't have a, a footballing school, so-called, or a base where, where they have learned this before, or a base where it becomes a habit for them in spatial awareness, you have to repeat it in training. And you have to do extra sessions like what we did at Chennai City. We had to do extra sessions for those players who did not play. You remember last season, one of the key factors we won the title was because of three number six. Our first number six got injured one quarter of the season. Second number six got injured and third number six got injured. I mean, how often can you say you got three number six to actually go into a team and then still win the, win the championship? So my, the, the point I'm trying to make here is we have to educate the reserve players, the players who are not playing. We have to try to do extra session for them as much as we can. Then when they come into the team, they get better. So if let's say they have not this, have this special awareness when they were young, so now they are here, what are we, what are we going to do? They are here, they, uh, we pick them, we, we train them, and we have to try to give as much as we can until we can. And special awareness, you need to train in training. You need to stop and coach. Because uh, if you don't, then it will just go away and then you won't create that habit. Next question, uh, how would you compare the Singapore League to the Indian Leagues? I mean, you can, you can uh, talk about both I-League and ISL. Singapore League, eh? Oh, okay. Oh, Singapore League, um, well, both are competitive. But uh, India League, there's, there's a great intensity uh, to it. There is much more coverage, much more fans, much more people playing, big country. Uh, the environment is different. In Singapore, we all know we have the national service. We, we, we have to go through that during the prime time of the players. So sometimes a lot of talented players do go away from football when they get into the military service from 18 to 20 years old. But um, it is as competitive, but you, as you can see from the FIFA ranking, Indian football are of a different level as opposed to Singapore football at the moment. But the league, Indian League is competitive as compared to Singapore League. Uh, how important is futsal or street football in the development of a young football player? It is interesting huh? because uh, most of the Brazilian starts on the street. I mean, back in those days, for my generation or my senior generations, we all started on the streets. It is very important to do non structured training for the younger footballers. Because you can have a structured training, maybe one week once, but you need to have a non-structured training, maybe twice, non-structured meaning, you get them down there, you org org organize uh, everything, let them play in different variations. Maybe today in this grid dimension, today in this grid dimension, but let them play. Let them solve their own footballing problems. And futsal allows you to do that for a start, until at least they develop their technical abilities and their getting out of tight situations. And then from then on, when you're 12 and you're 13, then you go on to the bigger game. All right. 
Uh, so, have you ever had to ditch your philosophy to win a game or get a result? No. All right. There is a continuation to the question. Do you <laughs> see yourself ever doing that in the future? If so, in what situation? You see, um, to ditch your philosophy and get the result, you have to look at the whole picture. If, let's say, from the start of the game, you ditch your philosophy and to get a result, then no. But if, um, if you're talking about the last five minutes of the game, to try and control the game, to, 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 to win the game because of players' uh, motivation level, because of players' fear, I would still be resistant to it. Although at times, yes, uh, as a coach, I was guilty that this thing happens in my team. But the next day, uh, you can ask the China City players. I had to educate them. We had one game where we were leading 4-1, if I'm not wrong. And the last five minutes, uh, um, we, the opponent scored two goals. And then another left, another four minutes, we decided to belt the ball up. We, instead of playing the way we play, we decided to belt the ball up. And when we belt the ball up, five times, opponent created three big chances in the counter. Three big chances. We could have lost the game 4-3 or 5-4, uh, if I'm not wrong. What would happen then? So I had to cut this video, this part of it, and educate the players why the building up would have been better as opposed to sending the ball up. So I had to educate them. And it's not wrong to send the ball up. So how do we do it? What are the ways to do it? What strategy can we use to do it? But the philosophy, no, we won't ditch it. But yes, tactically, we can strategize to change. But we won't ditch the playing style. We won't ditch the philosophy. Again, like I said, for example, instead of belting the ball up, maybe we can devise a tactical play. Yes, we belt the ball up, but where can we get the second ball? What can we do? Or can we invite and then belt the ball up? This is what I mean by not ditching the philosophy. All right. Uh, so what, what are the inspirations to you as a person, as a coach, and for your philosophy? Well, um, of course, I grew up uh, uh, playing the game. I had uh, many, uh, many good uh, coaches when I was growing up. I had a good uh, coach who was, uh, who was very good uh, in motivational skills when I was a young boy and I grew up learning it. And today, he's still, I still ask him for guidance because his motivation, his psychology was, was out of this world. I had uh, coaches where I learned technically who, who, have, who have passed away, uh, who have learned from these legends uh, during my playing days. It was during my playing days, uh, I, didn't, I didn't think so much during my playing days about the coaching aspect. But when I became a coach, I realized that when I was playing, when this thing happens, how, how knowledgeable were some of these coaches uh, now? How, how, how they did what they do? And I, I tried to learn from it even during my playing days. And that has actually motivated me to do better. And obviously, the other way, um, I was involved with coaches stopped me from expressing myself. And I told myself, I will not try to do this when I become a coach. I will not try to do this uh, when a coach does something to me where I can't express myself. So these are all motivating factors and inspirational figures that, that has influenced me towards this kind of philosophy. And at the end of the day, what stamped it was uh, obviously my friend, Jordi Gris, and again, my owner for keeping me to believe in the players because, uh, like I said, it's key. And my assistant coach, Shatya Sagara, for being there uh, for me when the times are down. Uh, I don't see any more questions. Uh, okay. I think we come to the end of the Q&A session. So thank you. Thank you, Coach Akbar. And uh, over to you, Ashwin. Yeah, uh, so firstly, I want to thank uh, Akbar uh, for taking time out and uh, giving us an uh, in-depth presentation on his philosophy. Uh, I hope uh, all the participants uh, in here uh, will have something to take back from this session. Uh, we from Chennai City would uh, uh, like to thank all of you for taking time out and coming here and you know being a part of this presentation and this webinar. So for the ones who missed this uh, and the ones who want to share this, the video will be available in our YouTube channel. Uh, so a link can also be shared. Uh, Maurya will be sharing it, I hope, uh, in a mail to all of you. Or you can just go and Google our YouTube channel. You'll find the whole video there for the people who want to view it. 
So we would like to say goodbye from us. And uh, until next time, we hope all of you stay safe and uh, take care. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.